Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm filming week two of my voice recap. Um, this week has been really, really crazy for me. A lot of things have happened. I'm getting ready to upload a vlog talking about some exciting new things that have happened in my life. But I did want to put this up first because I'm probably going to be busy all weekend doing some stuff that have to do with this big announcement and um, running around a couple places and in the town beside me is also a maple festival this weekend that I think I'm going to go to because I have a car. Surprise! Um, if you want to see a full car tour and hear all the details about my vehicle, you can watch the vlog that I'm going to post after this. But for right now, I just wanted to tell you guys that that is happening and I wanted to film this and put this up first because I have to go and do all those adult things that you do when you get a car and then I'll probably be going around to different places now that I have a vehicle to do that and just getting out and about um, with my new car for the next couple days so I wanted to get this up now so I make sure that it is up before Monday so let's just go ahead and jump into it so the first person I have on my list is Micah Triba she is 24 she was a veterinarian she came from a very acapella background she sang I'm every woman um, the first line just had me. I I was sold on her just with the first line. I think she's so, so, so good. I think she will definitely be a finalist um, or make it to at least top 10, I'd say. Um, and she is on Team Blake. The next one I have is Troy Ramey, Ramey, and his dad had passed away and his dad was a musician and influenced him a lot. He sang Wild World. He got a four chair turn. I thought he was really, really, really good. He had a really cool tone and he sang very effortlessly and he was almost like pitch perfect. Um, not completely, but he was very, very close. Um, he surprisingly is on team Gwen. And then Jack Cassidy, who is David Cassidy's nephew, is on there. He's only 18. He sang One of Us and he played piano and it was so, so, so good, I thought. Not really a standout for me um, performance-wise. I think he has a little bit of work to do, but just he stood out to me because he is Josh Cassidy's nephew and because of the history of the Partridge family and basically his family and he stood out for me for that but not necessarily for his performance solely so I really liked him but I do think he has a little bit of work to do um he's really good on piano and he also is on team Alicia so I think that's a perfect match and then my standout of the absolute week I am so in love with this person this is Kawan DeBose he's 30 he was a church boy um he opened up for Mary J Blige um, he sang Let's Get It On and it was so, so good. I was literally like, like, first of all, that song in general is just an amazing song, but he started singing and I was literally like screaming like, damn, like he's good. Um, I believe he got a, he got three chairs to turn. Um, his transitions like from upper registry to lower registry and just like some of the falsetto notes and it, it was just amazing I really really liked him definitely definitely think he's going to be like top five um definitely a finalist I hope he was really 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 good I loved him he's on team Adam and then Taylor Alexandra is 25 um, he was the country punk boy from Georgia. He sang a country version of Cher's Believe. Um, it was a crazy rendition. Not necessarily. I think he wasn't necessarily a standout for me, but I think it's because he sang such a different song that I didn't really get to hear him where he's comfortable. I ne definitely think in the battle rounds and once he does get into something that he's comfortable with, I think he will be a standout, but right now I'm a little bit like torn um, between him, so I don't really know how to feel about him. Um, I'd like to see him sing a country song and then I'll give a better opinion, but I thought the version that he did of that share song was really, really good. He's on Team Adam. And then Gabby Bormeo, she is 22. She moved to New York City when she was 15. Um, 
she worked on a song or worked with John Legend. She sang Happy. I felt like she was very controlled. I think she will probably go far. Um, she's on Team Adam. Missy Robertson, um, she's 34. She was a disability employment person. Um, she sang Scars to Your Beautiful. She had a little bit of pitchiness in her runs, um, but I loved her message and not necessarily a standout for me, but I really liked her message and I really liked her personality and what she stood for more so than I liked her singing. So she was a standout for personality, but not necessarily for performance, but I think she can improve. Um, she was on Team Alicia, and then Aaliyah Rose, who was the 14-year-old who was a YouTube star, which I actually think I've seen some of her videos before. Um, she was friends with or influenced by Megan Trainer. Megan Trainer made a video for her, all that good stuff. She sang Rise Up, and I thought the reason for her song was really, really good. Um, she chose it because her family's not really financially stable. They live with her grandparents and I just thought it was really a cool choice for a 14 year old and a very meaningful message for a 14 year old. Um, she's very mature. She was very controlled I felt like. Um, but she is 14 so she definitely has work to do but I think she's she, she's got it. She's got the potential there, but she's she's very young and I'd, I'd love to see somebody who comes from such a background like that to rise up. So um, she's on Team Gwen. And then the last person who performed on Monday night was Josh West. He was 17. He was in a rock band with his dad. He sang Ordinary World. First of all, his hair was on point. His voice was pretty good. He sounded like a very stereotypical 90s alternative band and that's kind of the realm that he sings in is very 90s alternative rock type stuff. He got four chairs to turn. He was really really good. Definitely definitely a standout. I pray that this boy goes far because he just reminds me of all my favorite bands and I just really really like him. Hope he goes far. He's on Team Adam. And then going into Tuesday night's episode, Johnny Gates was the first person who made it on there. He was signed to a deal before. He was on tour with Rod Stewart. He sang Maggie May. He had a very cool tone, a very rocker voice. He got three chairs to turn. Um, they mentioned something about Mick Jagger and him having moves like Jagger. He kind of looked like Mick Jagger a little bit, like he had the the big the big mouth that Mick Jagger had a little bit and I, I thought he was really 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 cool definitely a standout hope he goes far I really just I really feel for rock songs because that's probably one of my favorite genres of music is rockers and I love when rockers are on the show because such a fun genre for people to perform I just love it so I hope he goes far as well don't know I'm not sure but um, he is on Team Gwen and then one that I actually watched on YouTube before I saw it on the actual episode was Malik Davidge. He is 23. Um, his father was in prison most of his life. He has a daughter of his own who he is very much there for because he didn't have that father figure. Um, he was very, very emotional. Um, he sang Sure Thing. He only got one chair to turn and that was Adam, but um, I, I don't think he was super, super good, but he's, again, he stood out to me because of his personality and because of his emotions and because of his story more so than his performance. So um, I definitely think he has a lot, a lot of work to do. I don't see him making it to the finals, but you never know. With a coach like Adam, you never know what's gonna happen. I really liked his story. Um, I really liked his emotions and he is, his daughter is just adorable. So he is on Team Adam. Next was Lauren Judd. She was 16, she was from Utah, she was in a choir. She sang Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. She got three chairs to turn. I thought it was very, very good, except especially for a 16 year old. Um, it was just kind of like soft and very powerful at the same time. It had like that both sides of it and it was a very cool style and a very different version of that song. Even though it sounded the same, it was very like a different style. I really liked it. She is on Team Alicia. Definitely think she might go far, but again, she is young. 
I always doubt young people a little bit because they still have a lot of growing to do in their voice, but again, you never know. Then another 16 year old who is on the show is Caroline Skye. Um, she had a family band and played in bars. She talked about how she was too young to play in bars, so they took the mic outside on the sidewalk and she sang from the sidewalk. Um, she's saying, will you love me tomorrow? She had amazing vibrato, like amazing. It was so incredible for a 16 year old. Um, she was really, really good. I liked her. Um, again, she's 16, she's young. Um, so I, I, there's room to grow there with every young person. I say this, there's always room to grow when you're young, but I definitely think she is really, really good and definitely has the potential to win this. But she is on Team Gwen. And then the last person I'm going to talk about is Josh Hoyer. He was 40. He was a bar singer. He was a dad of two little girls. He sang Old Girl. And he was, again, one of those really, like, rocker, blues, funk type person. And I really, really liked him. Um, not a standout for me quite yet. But I do think he did really good. I think he has potential to grow some more. But he was really good from the bat. And he is on Team Blake. So I think that's going to be a cool match. And yeah, so that is it for this recap. I think I covered actually everybody who made it on the show this time. Um, so this might be a little bit of a longer video. So I'm sorry. But I, I just really like everybody on the show. I think everybody that makes it on The Voice because they have pre-auditions before they have the taped auditions. I just think that everybody who auditions is really, really good. Um, of course, they all have some room to grow, but they are definitely good from the beginning and I just think that's really cool about the show because sometimes on other like music competition shows they're not very good at all and I feel like everybody who makes it to the taped auditions is really really good on the voice because of those pre-auditions before the taped one so anyways um i just really really liked everybody i think this season's going to be awesome i'm excited to see the next couple blind episodes and see where these artists start to take their career and their song choices and all that kind of stuff so i hope you guys enjoyed this i will be filming another one next week i'm sure and probably up until the end of the season if i make it that far so i hope you guys enjoyed this and make sure to go check out my other vlog that I'm going to post later today or tomorrow about my car and about some exciting updates and yeah I will see you guys all in a new video bye guys